asked the same question about having the bye week coming into a game this big. You know, do you want that momentum of keep playing, or do you think it's beneficial to have a break before you face this type of team? We've had bye weeks in the past. Um, in fact, in 19, we went into the playoffs uh, with a bye week for week 11, and then a bye week because we earned it um, in regional rankings. So we actually had two straight weeks off. Um, so we're used to it. Um, I don't know if it's a huge advantage, truthfully. Um, we did have a couple injuries in the Northwood game that potentially, um, you know, may have cost those people the chance to play if it was, you know, a back-to-back -back week. So probably a couple guys that um, can play now that probably wouldn't have played if we had a game and they got it, uh, banged up the week of that, you know, the week previous to, to the Grand Valley game. So. I'll ask it. Uh, is Jared one of those? Jared got hurt against uh, – um, Ashland, so that was a while ago. Um, he's still a work in progress. You probably guys saw him out there. Um, we're just trying to bring him, bring him back. Um, it's been, you know, I, I don't know what it's been, but the last two uh, seasons now in 19 through five games, we started three different quarterbacks. And now 21 through five games, we started three different quarterbacks. And in fact, uh, Jesse Rivera is our fourth quarterback that you saw out there. He was hurt too. So at one point in time, we had about one and a half. And so uh, we think we got all of them moving around fine. But you know, there's a lot to be determined as to how how effective each of them will be. Um, you know, on Saturday. You know, Evan Cummins has been limping around for a few weeks as well. So uh, we're hoping that everybody's healthy and and uh, we'll be ready to go. But it's yet to be seen. If Jared's healthy enough, is he getting the first snap on, on the offense, or what do you? I mean, that's what I did to start <laughs> the game against Finley. We literally tossed a coin, and Jared got the first uh, the first series. So I've, you know, I'm completely confident in all four of those guys. The one that probably would be least likely to play would be Jesse Rivera, but the other three have played so many snaps. You know, I mean. Obviously, Malik against Northwood broke the school record for passing. Evan started uh, the Saginaw game. Um, Jared started the first two. And so a lot of it has to do with, like, you know, how, how their health is and, and what their comfortability is running our system. I'll only ask you one question about Malik instead of about five of them. But, uh, but his, his whole journey, I mean, he's been remarkable from – basically only one actual offer and then obviously being injured, being out of football. Just touch on that. What did you see in him when you brought him here? Well, more so than what I uh, saw when I brought him here, but what I see when he's here, he's, he is so extraordinarily unselfish. It's unbelievable. He's like, like uh, you know, tweeting when we win, not tweeting when he plays, you know, but tweeting saying, you know, first win, second win, you know, and, and that was Jared starts. But supporting Jared, um, you know, and, and playing, play, playing reps like in the Finley game. But then when I'm rolling somebody else, uh, I actually he, he took one possession uh, where he drove us down the field, and then I took him out for one play down, you know, inside the ten, and Jared scored the touchdown. And so I could see Jared coming off the field like, dang, I just took Malik's touchdown, and I only had one play. And uh, so you can see the interaction on camera, like they're both like happy for each other. So it's, it's been pretty incredible. Um, these guys, these young men are so unselfish and, and uh, just great team players. So I'm really proud of uh, Malik, how great of a team player he is. I used the word scary to describe the Lakers offense. And apparently that was a poor choice of words on my part. Um, defensively, what type of stress is this type of game when you have two high powered offenses? Well, I hate to burst your bubble here, but uh, um, this has been predicted before, and then all of a sudden it's a grind. Um, I think their offense is great. I think their defense probably is equally as great. And so they've done nice things. I would say our defense is equally to great to our offense. Um, you know, we've just scored a lot of points. Uh, they're the number three ranked uh, scoring uh, team in the nation, you know, and and so both teams have scored a lot of points, um, but I wouldn't 
I wouldn't predict a high scoring affair. Um, I just never do uh, in this game. You know, it's been um, it's been a while since it's a high scoring affair. Um, 2016, I guess, in the playoffs when we beat them in the playoffs at L. Lovers was probably the last time it's high scoring. And then it was 17, grind, 18, grind, 19. I don't think we scored until like uh, maybe 15 seconds ago in the half. Um, they scored on a touchdown in which they scooped and scored for 90, and they kicked a field goal. So I think it was like 10 to 7 at halftime, and everybody was like, oh, these offenses are great. We had just finished uh, the week before up at Tech with 53, and then barely, I think we got to 21 maybe that day. So I'm not anticipating a high-scoring affair. It's, uh, you know, the, b both these teams are too good in all three, uh, all three phases, you know, um, to, to – make one one area dominate uh, i just i just don't see it that leads me to my next question i mean you know this rivalry well of course but what has it become where it used to be a really big game here in west michigan then it becomes a big game statewide now it's a big game countrywide given the rankings and the potential playoff implications what has this rivalry really become yeah i you know i i took this job in 12 not believing that we could really ever compete with them. <laughs> and uh, we beat them the first year, which was crazy. And then we beat them again in 13. But, you know, uh, we've, we've been able to compete with them. I'm proud of our guys for, for being able to compete with them. But the rivalry for, for West Michigan in particular, I mean, everybody should be celebrating this rivalry. Um, you know, I think there's probably 12 teams left undefeated in Division II two of them are in West Michigan. Um, so everybody should be celebrating how, how great uh, these programs are. Um, in the last, last three or four or five years, probably I guess since uh, 15, um, you know, both teams have been like ranked, you know, in, in the nation um, on a regular, you know. And so it's been pretty cool to see. Um, it's been a pleasure to be a part of that rivalry. And so, you know, I walked into the Rockford Caledonia game last Friday and, and somebody said, uh, you miss this? And it kind of resonated with me for a second because I'm like, last time I coached Rockford against Rockford, I was at Muskegon and we had like 15,000 there. It was so packed, it was unbelievable. And I thought, you know, no, I'm going to have it next weekend, you know. And so it's it's cool, but it's uh, it's also, you know, it's, it's, it's just it should be celebrated in all of West Michigan, as should be the Michigan-Michigan State game here coming up in a few weeks if both of those are undefeated. Because think about that. You know, you got two DT, D2 teams out of how many D2 teams there are in the state undefeated. And then you got two, you know, FBS teams that are, you know, ranked – this high so it's a great great uh, time to be a football fan of Michigan and with the COVID eligibility obviously you guys have a ton of super experienced guys and uh, Grand Valley is the same way do you feel like having that much experience of guys who've played in this game before is going to change it at all no I don't think so it's uh you know it's it's just everybody's just tuned in you know I and I and I think um I think they do a good job of grounding their guys and we do a good job of grounding our guys to say, one, the winner is, is in the lead in the GLIAC. Two, um, the winner is in the lead with regional ranking. So, you know, there's so much more to play for than the rivalry. The rivalry truthfully means nothing to me. It, I, I just think rivalry games, just, they, ju they just don't impact me because I'm focused on what all the other things are that, that are big. And so, you know, we're, we're a two-time GLIAC champion in a row. We won it in 18, undefeated in the GLIAC. We won it in 19, undefeated in the GLIAC. Um, I think the last time they won it was 16. Um, so they're hungry for that. We, we know they're hungry for that. We're hungry to hold on to it. They're hungry to, to take it. And so, uh, you know, it, it's down to the wire, truthfully, where they, you know, the, the winner of this game takes – a one game lead going into very few games left, you know, and so that's that's big.